Welcome to the Catholic Midlife Podcast, where we're addressing the challenges and the opportunities of midlife from a uniquely Catholic perspective. Join us each week as we spark a midlife renewal and create a firm foundation for the next wonderful, exciting, awesome season of life. Hello, and welcome to the Catholic Midlife Podcast. I'm Curtis. I'm here with my fellow hosts, Karen. Hey, everybody. Hey. It's great to be here with you. And last episode, we talked about happiness. We're trying to make happiness safe for Catholics, okay? It's okay. Just (laughs) jump in. It's okay to be happy? It's okay to be happy. It is? It's worth pursuing. It is important as spiritual beings, as Christians, as Catholics, to strive for happiness. And we can make a lot of choices for it that are perfectly in alignment with our highest values and everything we believe in. Wow, that's good news. Yeah, it's good news. So as I was reminded by a priest at a healing mass where that I attended recently, we are embodied persons. That's Catholic dogma. Mm. You have to believe that. Now, <laughs> if you were in doubt about that, just pinch yourself, reassure yourself. Yes, <laughs> you are an embodied person. And you have a spiritual, a mental, and an emotional components. And you want these things to be in congruence because you want all that awesome Catholic and interior spiritual life to flow through you, the Holy Spirit, to permeate everything about you, having congruence, integrity, unity, and happiness is, is part of bridging all that into unity. Wow. That's a, that's a really great way to look at it, Curtis. I'm, I'm wondering if I could just make a comment for our listeners about happiness more generally. Well, you're a co-host. I guess you can say what you want. I can insert myself in the conversation. Awesome. So one thing I was thinking is we're using the word happiness pretty broadly. And and if you're a psychologist studying this, then, then you're very particular about how you use happiness and what it means. But really, we're using it in a really broad way to encompass not just pleasant feelings or positive emotions, but what it means to flourish as a human person, what it means to live the good life, what it means to thrive as a human being and as you were created to. So that version of happiness, it has a lot of elements. It has a number of things and positive psychologists say these elements are often things that we as people seek for their own sake, not for the sake of something else, not to get something else, but there's something about them in and of themselves that we strive for just because of what they are. Yeah, yeah it's, very, it's very interesting to, to think about w- what it is we strive for, for its own sake. And so purpose is one of them, and that's something, that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. And purpose speaks to many things. It speaks to the flourishing mm-hmm. and, and to happiness, and it speaks to this, this unity that we were talking about, or I was talking about. So purpose, what is purpose? Well, can I give you my favorite definition of purpose? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Okay. So there's, there's really a lot of definitions out there. I like this one by a guy named Richard Leader. And he says that purpose is the deepest belief within us, where we have a profound sense of who we are, where we came from, and what we're here to do. So there's this clarity of identity, who we are, who we are uniquely, who we are created to be, where we came from, right? What's, what's our origin? And, and what we're here to do, what we're engaged in, in this life and how it connects with who we are. And I almost would even add in there something around where we're going and a sense of my end, 
where I'm headed. And we talked about this a little bit when we talked about hope, but eschatology as where is this whole thing going and, and what's my part in it? And Richard Leader goes on to say, purpose is that thread we choose to shape our lives around. It's a source of deep vitality and vision. So there's, there's something about connection to purpose that gives us a vision for who we are, where we're going, and, and gives us life. Purpose. So I have a couple observations. One is that you finally got to spell out a definition. You must be very pleased with yourself. Yes. I like to define things. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Okay. So I can see you're, you're lighting up over that. So my other kind of response is great. So now purpose is like this thing I've got to define and I'm going to put it on my sleeve and compare purposes. And is this another thing I got to do, have purpose? Ah, interesting. So, so you're saying that it feels kind of like this thing you have to figure out and find like some big thing that you'd got, have to discover. Yes. That's what's bothering you. Yeah. Is this like some big anchor I got to pull off the bottom and carry around or somehow deal with. Right. Right. Well, okay. So actually I'm glad you said that because I feel like there's a lot of, there's a lot of people out there who are really into purpose. <laughs> and in the Western world, there's this sense that you have a purpose. You have this one purpose and it's your life's purpose and you have to figure it out and then you have to go do it. And it's going to be, don't be small. It has to be big. But can I confess something? Yes. Well, I don't, I mean, there's no failure. There's only learning, but I got an F on the Simon Sinek, Sinek big Y question. <laughs> what do you mean you got an F? I don't understand. Well, he's got this big find your why yeah. process uh -huh. and it was just not happening. That was not a good process for me. Okay. So it didn't lead you to the big why. Yeah. So I don't mean to drag everybody off on a tangent, but Simon Sinek is, is, he has a lot of great things to say, but that's his big ax to grind mm -hmm. is find your why. Yeah. And I found uh, it was not helpful. Right. So one reason that might be is, it is we have a lot of purpose in life. We have larger purposes. We have smaller purposes. We have ongoing things that we give our life to. And we have daily purposeful moments that we engage in. So, so purpose is really this again, this sort of broad category that encompasses a lot of things. And, and if you want to boil it down, it's the reason you get up in the morning. It's the reason you get out of bed and the reason you start your day. It's, it's having a reason to live. Okay. Can we start there? Yeah, that sounds like a good place to start. Now that we're embodied beings, yes. we should have a reason to live. That sounds like a good place to start. Excellent. So there's a lot of ways that could look like more specifically in your life. You know, as Catholics, we talk a lot about vocation, right? What are you called to do? Who are you called to be? And those are elements of purpose in our life. They're some of the bigger chunks, probably. And, you know, we have, we have work and careers and activities that we give larger chunks of our time to. And, and I think in, we say we have purpose in those when we feel like who we are, that clarity of identity is matched and aligned with the thing that we're doing, particularly if we're bringing something to something that's bigger than us. Oh, sure. So this is, this is the lawyer that gets into the business and, and after about 10 years, 
he feels like he's just helping the rich get richer. He's lost sight of what he went into that industry for, which was to help people, to help them access to law, to make things work. But instead he's lost sight of, of the meaning of the whole thing. And he's sitting around thinking, okay, well, what's my purpose really? I'm not liking this. Exactly. Exactly. And so at that point, right, entering into a process of reexamining who he is, identity, strengths, interests, engagement, what makes him tick, and reexamining meaning and purpose can give him a lens by which to evaluate what he's doing and how he wants to move forward. And that could be a lot of different ways. It could be finding a type of work or career that is more aligned with who he is and, and who he wants to be and how he wants to serve the world. It could be reconnecting with his original sense of purpose and what am I here for and restructuring things to really be visionary and in alignment with that purpose. There, there's a lot of ways that could show up in his life. That, that touches on something I think is very important that example in that there's some action being right. taken. There's at a minimum, there's a shift in perspective, but also there's likely to be some changes in the approach and maybe some larger changes around the scope of what they're engaging in at the workplace. So purpose is deeply connected with taking action mm -hmm. and action is a very broad term. I mean, if you're a prayer warrior, you're taking action, but purpose is not something that really comes to us by sitting around on the couch or working out workbooks and stuff like that. Right. It's hard to bring your, your deepest authentic self to something bigger than yourself. If you're not bringing it. Somewhere. Exactly. 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 I also like to talk about aligned purpose and maybe not so aligned purpose. And I, I think your example of the attorney is pretty good. So, so sometimes we find ourselves in, in, you know, something like the worker career, and we might start to feel like this is not aligned really with who I am. And, and it's actually, it's actually disturbing how many people get to midlife and say, I've been doing this thing for so many years, and actually it's not aligned with who I am. And gosh, now that I think about it, it really is affecting my happiness in life, my flourishing, my thriving. And so there are some big areas where you really want who you are to be really aligned with what you're doing and what you're bringing to the world, align purpose. I think though, that some of those other people you were talking about, Curtis, who, who really hammer on this, find your big why, maybe don't appreciate that we have power to create purpose and meaning in things that might feel non-aligned initially. And I'm thinking about the example that Martin Seligman uses in one of his books, about this gal, she was a little younger and she, she graduated college, but she couldn't find the job she wanted. So she got a job at a grocery store. And I think she was either the cashier or the bagger. And it was just not aligned with her personality, with her goals, with her degree. And it was very frustrating to be in this situation that felt so unaligned and didn't seem in her mind to have meaning and purpose. And Seligman's point was, we will be engaged with activities. We will be in situations that feel unaligned, but you can create purpose. And, and the way you do that is you understand who you are. You have that clarity around your identity and your strengths, and you can choose to bring one of those strengths or values or beautiful, unique things about you 
to that situation to create purpose. So what, what about that gal who was working in the checkout line? Well, she actually was very curious. She, she was engaging. She communicated with people well. She, she could bring curiosity and connection to the things that she was doing. So when she was intentional about bringing curiosity and connection as a strength to that activity, it infused that activity with meaning for her. And she created purpose in a situation that seemed to have no purpose. Yeah, I know that example. I think she she created some goals around making every person that crossed her path in that checkout line have the most incredible positive encounter of their day right there. Wow. That's an awesome goal. Yeah. So this was a kind of a bridge job. She was a graduate student and this is something she had to do. Mm -hmm. She had to get through it. And you talk about alignment, but it, it's also about being whole, yeah. fe feeling, having this sense of integrity, of wholeness, of completeness. So for her to shift her approach, to take some steps, it, it's much more than just getting through the day. Although I think that was probably her initial goal. It, it was about her showing up with integrity throughout all three dimensions of her life. Right. And, and you know, the way we do one thing is the way we do everything for her to have integrity in that area of her life uh, was important to, to the, the bigger picture. Yes. And you know, it's all interconnected. I suspect that the focus on having integrity, the focus on creating meaning in that situation, I'm sure it affected how she felt emotionally about that experience and, and whether her emotions were positive or negative around that whole experience. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Karen, you just talked about aligned and non-aligned and this, there's another, uh, cu couple of ways I think about purpose. And that's the big purpose, which you touched on that when you're sitting there thinking, wow, I, I feel like I don't have any purpose in my life. That's a very big question. That's a big arena. And that's a, a question approximately of alignment of your, if your spiritual, your mental and your emotional life are cooperating so that you're taking actions that are leading you to the purposes that God is presenting you with his providence. Mm -hmm. So that's a big purpose question. And you could have more than one big purpose. They come in all shapes and sizes. They come in very small ones as well, because there's not many actions that we take that really don't have purpose. They pretty much have a conscious or an unconscious purpose, whether we know it or not. Although. Sometimes we just get hijacked by negativity. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if there's a purpose in that. Still, the smaller moments are pretty interesting to explore as you go through your day. Yes. As you're talking, I'm thinking about really an interesting question that creates a lot of awareness for people is just asking yourself, as you were saying, in the smaller moments of your day, well, what's my purpose here? What's my intention? Is this connected to a bigger purpose or intention? Or how is this fulfilling what I believe to be an area of purpose for me? Yeah. So my purpose is I don't want my wife to get annoyed with me. How's that? <laughs> Actually, I'm glad you said that because it's a much more powerful purpose if it's not an avoidance purpose, right? So that was a, a purpose that something wouldn't happen instead of a purpose for something to happen. So reframe that for me. Is that okay? Am I annoying you? I'm listening. <laughs> I'm annoying you. So how could you 
say what your purpose is in a positively reframed way. Sure. So I, I could think that I, I want to promote harmony and usually there's some point to this activity because I want to have some guests over and look, have the place look good, or I want to feel good about whatever it is. Mm -hmm. We're talking about some kind of domestic chore. That, oh, that that's what you're thinking of. Well, that, that explains a lot. It makes but, sense. But I'm having a different, <laughs> I'm having a different breakthrough. Okay, sure. So, so there's more purpose to life. Now listen carefully. This is big. There's more purpose to life than keeping your wife happy. Ooh, big break. There is. Here. Are you sure? <laughs> I'm not so sure. I need to. I need to take a survey on that. No, the cat's, the cat's <laughs> out of the bag. Oh uh, yes, but can I share something interesting about that? Oh, that uh, Dodo. <laughs> your happiness, your happiness, does influence the people around you. Oh, now that is so true. So, so whether or not your purpose is to make your spouse happy, your own happiness has a big effect on the people you love and, and your closest family members. Yeah, absolutely. So it's important, as we've said, to invest in your own happiness and strive for that, it affects the people around you in a positive way when you do that and when you are happier. Mm, that's right, that's right. Okay, thanks, I just had to make that point because just to the moms out there, just to the moms out there who think it's all about other people's happiness and it's not about my happiness, that is not in alignment, that's not true. A and in, in midlife, the, the mom question is a pretty big one and it comes up for men too. And we could talk about this a lot and we have in the past, not, not on the podcast, but there is just a quick point to be made that as roles change, as activities change, our sense of purpose, especially in midlife can start to drift and we start to wonder what's going on. And this is especially true for moms because you are so involved in all the details, all the supervision, the emotional life of your children. And of course, as that starts to shift, your sense of purpose is it's going to change and possibly be undermined and possibly just be destroyed. Yes. It's very common. And, and that's, that's a big transition. It is. And, and you can make that transition with grace and with, with power seeking big purposes and little purposes. Yes. And not getting sucked down into some rabbit hole of just uh, distraction or people pleasing or whatever else. Right. Right. In fact, in fact, this, I just want to tell our listeners, this is one of the things that Curtis and I do as coaches is we guide people and support them through this process of discovering, unlocking and creating new kinds of purpose in their life. It's a very common part of the midlife transition. There is so much potential, so much potential within you to reconnect with who you are, to reconnect with what you bring to something that's bigger than yourself, and to reconnect to happiness. So if you're interested in learning more, I encourage you to reach out to us at this following email. It's thecatholicmidlife at gmail.com. We'd be happy to chat with you about coaching and guiding you through this season and this process. Absolutely. Reach out via email. We'd love to schedule a relaxed conversation with you. 
Karen, thank you so much. It's great to be here with everyone here on the Catholic Midlife Podcast, and we'll see you next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Catholic Midlife Podcast. It's great to be here with you. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite app or platform. Leave a review that's so helpful so that others like you can find the podcast. And be sure to tell your friends. We'll see you next week.